Welcome back to the Jump Zone, and today I'm going to be getting into witchcraft and witches and warlocks. Now, um, I usually do these logical arguments when I'm up against atheists because you can't be messing around with them. you got to shut them down with that logic, especially if you're getting into the supernatural and things that can't be proven by science. In this case, we're talking about the art of witchcraft and wizardry. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Uh, no. Because if you're a witch or a warlock, you're going to have an altar. And if you have an altar, nine times out of ten, you'll be dealing with familiar spirits. But what are familiar spirits? Familiar spirits are fallen angels. And I can back that up with scripture from the Bible. But most practitioners of magic never really want to get into that because... They don't want people to shine a bright light on their sin. But this shouldn't really be that hard to prove because if you believe in the supernatural, you're already halfway there. You believe in spirits, right? Okay, so where do you think those spirits came from? You think they just spawned themselves into creation? Are they a product of evolution that just rose out of a, a, the, the Big Bang or something? Who do you think created them? A god? Uh, a god who was then birthed by an elder god like Kronos and Uranus and all the likes of them? Nah. These deities were birthed by something, well, someone who existed before them. And even more powerful, an infinitely more powerful spirit. It was God, the Great I Am, the King of Kings, El Shaddai, Yehovah, who created everything that was made, the heavens and all the host in it of which the fallen angels once belonged. He is our creator. And he was not created. Oh, and the universe is not God. It has a finite shape and a dimension and all that. It has a creator. And again, God does not. Now, atheists are going to have a hard time with this one. Because, well, if the universe was created, then who created it? And then what created that God that created it? I just answered that. The great I am. And he is the great I am, because he simply is. He simply is. Now, I know that doesn't make sense to your logical, you know, atheist mind. But I believe it was uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson who once said, the universe isn't obligated to make sense to you. Now, that sounds good and all, but it's, it's more like God isn't obligated to make sense to you. For he has no origin that you can understand. Okay? Alright. Okay, and now I will leave you with a passage uh, from Isaiah chapter 47, starting at verse 10. For you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have warped you. And you have said in your heart, I am and there is no one else besides me. Therefore, evil shall come upon you. You shall not know from where it rises, and trouble shall fall upon you. You will not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. Stand now with your enchantments, and the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. Perhaps you will prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you, from what shall come upon you. Okay, and that is the Lord saying this, making a promise of doom to all witches and warlocks and sorcerers alike. That is not good. You do not want to be an enemy of the Most High God. He will put all of your little gods, your little deities, to shame. And there ain't nothing they can do about it. All right. So with um, that being said, I'm going to sign off. 
Stay blessed.